Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And as many of you, my regular viewers, at least know, I have a passion for introducing maker technologies, 3D printing, electronics in the future, woodworking, fabrication, to non-technical folks. In particular, to folks that have children or grandchildren or new retirees that want to get involved in this exciting world of desktop fabrication, this exciting world of creating things that in the past required whole factories, this exciting world of making stuff. And in order to do that, I attempt to lower the barriers to entry to make these technologies easier to use by pointing out particular machines and software and techniques that are very approachable. One way to make 3D printing approachable is to find a way to eliminate the need to install complex software on a computer to get started. Ideally, I'd like anyone to be able to use a 3D printer all based on software that's on the web, downloading potentially to an SD card, putting it in the printer and printing. Now, in order to do that and to experiment with that, I went to Best Buy this week and I purchased a Chromebook for $189. Um, you can spend more than that taking a family out to a ball game. And so with this very low cost computer as a platform, I wanted to discover web-based software I could use to convert 3D models into the right format for printing on a inexpensive printer, or for that matter, even for printing on much higher end printers, such as my Prusa i3 MK3, which is a $750 to $1,000 printer, depending on whether you buy a kit or fully assembled. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Together, we're going to look at four web-based applications specifically for their slicer capabilities. A slicer, once again, many of you that are not new to 3D printing know this, but I might have some new viewers here. A slicer converts a three-dimensional model into a series of layers that you can then print on a 3D printer. This is the first of a two-part series. In this part, we're going to look at the slicers and my first impressions. I've done a series of prints, but not too many yet, of these calibration cats using various slicers to look at the quality. But I needed to do a lot more work in order to evaluate these web-based slicers properly. And that just takes time because printing takes time. So this is the first part, and in a few days or a week, there'll be a second part where we look in more detail at quality. Let's first take a look at features. Now, if you look up to the screen, you'll see the format we're going to use. For each of these four applications, we're going to look at the nature of the software, how you access it. Is it only available on the web or is it available in other ways? Are you able to use this software to manage a series of printers or is this for one printer? How good is the slicer? First impressions. How good is the print quality overall? Is it easy to configure and is it easy to use? Okay, let's get started. The first platform or application we're gonna look at is Astroprint. Now, I've done close to 80 videos already, and I've talked about Astroprint a number of times. I really want to like Astroprint. The challenge of Astroprint is it's not quite there yet. Astroprint is a complete ecosystem. 
If you look at this image, you'll see that there's a web version. You can use it from a mobile device. You can use it from your desktop. You can use it from a Raspberry Pi using a touch screen. It's an overall platform. The characteristics of this platform make it perfect for the first time user. It's very easy to configure and to use. If we look here at the configuration screen, you'll see there are a series of choices, but most importantly, what you'll see is AstroPrint is a wrapper around existing slicers. What that means is you get the best of leading slicers accessible from the web. Wow, that's a marriage made in heaven. That should be perfect. So what's the challenge? The challenge is that while the web interface is very easy to use and does allow you to modify the slicer configuration, it has very poor capabilities for positioning your object on your printer. You can't rotate an object, you can't flip an object, you can't move it on the print bed. What that means is that if your object is not oriented when it's created as a three-dimensional object properly for printing, you won't be able to fix it from the web. If for some reason it's oriented like this, well, that's probably not an optimal way to print this. You would want to print this vertically in vase mode, not this way with supports underneath. Now, the desktop version of AstroPrint does support rotation. That sort of defeats the idea. I'm looking for a web-based alternative. There are many desktop slicers available that have full capabilities for moving objects around. So AstroPrint is the web-based alternative I wanna love, but it's not there yet. Next, we're going to look at a slicer that is truly a work of love. I've never met Stuart Allen. It says on LinkedIn that I have a second level connection to him, that people I've met have met him. Um, he is a technologist and entrepreneur. And over the past few years, he's created a completely open source slicer, meaning you can download the, the program yourself, use it however you want. And the license for it even says you can modify it, you can redistribute it. That's called Curie Moto. Now, the Curie Moto environment is not just a slicer. It's a computer-aided manufacturing environment because it can format, it can slice three-dimensional objects, not just for 3D printers, but also for laser printers, for CNC machines, for a variety of other tools. It's really a remarkable piece of software created by one guy, it looks like in his spare time. The setup is quite easy, even though the user interface is minimalist and looks sort of um, not current. What is most impressive is it doesn't have the limitations of AstroPrint. When you load a model into Curimoto, you have the ability to scale it, to rotate it, to position it, to do all the things you need to properly use it. Now, I've created prints from both AstroPrint and Curimoto, and it's no surprise that the prints from AstroPrint um, look just like any print printed from Cura, because Cura is the embedded browser. Curimoto did require a bit of tuning of slicer parameters. I was able to get close to the quality, but not quite there. So what's interesting about Curimoto is it's a completely new slicer, all written in JavaScript specifically for the web. So Curimoto has enormous potential. The challenge is, depending on how much time Stuart Allen has, because right now he's really the only contributor, there's a limit to how rapidly this software will evolve. One of the pluses of both AstroPrint and Curimoto is they're both integrated into Thingiverse. That means you can select an object in Thingiverse and send it over the web directly into AstroPrint or Curimoto. You can slice it, you can save that sliced file, the G code, to an SD card, put it into your printer, and you're ready to go. That's exactly what I'm looking for.
The first of the proprietary higher-end solutions we're going to look at is Canvas from the people that make the palette multi-color accessory add-on for 3D printers. Mosaic makes a product called Palette, and what Palette does is it allows you to take multiple colors of filament and splice them into a new filament that has just the right color segments at the right length so you can print on a single color printer in multiple colors. It is a remarkable process to watch. Now, to support their technology, originally, they had a piece of software that you ran on a desktop that converted your single color prints into prints that you could be used with the Palette multicolor add-on. More recently, with the Palette 2, they introduced a remarkable piece of software called Canvas. Now, Canvas can be used not only with the Palette, but it also can be used as a standalone web-based slicer. Canvas has a beautiful user interface. It's easy to use. It has all of the features you'd expect from a full high-end slicer. The visualizations are very, very good, and they run remarkably fast. In fact, the slicing runs remarkably fast, whether you're using a low-end Chromebook or you're testing from a high-end computer, a Mac or a PC. My first impression of Canvas has been excellent. Now, I've only printed one Calibration Cat so far, and it did take a little bit of work to initially load the characteristics of my printer into Canvas because it did not have a profile off the shelf for my printer. But once I got that set up properly, it did a nice job. Um, very close to what I've seen from proprietary high-end slicers. And my expectation is that because Canvas is designed for a high-end process, with proper tuning, proper setup, it will be excellent. Right now, Canvas is available for free. There are going to be paid alternatives coming down the line, um, and those will add capabilities for managing more than one printer, for uh, managing printers with multiple print heads, for higher end capabilities. Um, but the version right now is available for free, but remember it is from a proprietary company. It's free as long as they want it to be free, and it's within their right to change that at any time. Now, the last web-based slicer we're going to look at is really more than a slicer. It's a whole manufacturing, 3D printing management ecosystem. It's from a company called 3D Printer OS. 3D Printer OS appears to be targeting both um, industrial use of printers where you have a large number of printers universities where you have labs of many printers, schools where you have a large number of printers. And in fact, 3D Printer OS is more or less the partner software that's used by some of the uh, better sc high-end school targeting printers, such as the Dremel line of printers. When you first log in or create an account on 3D Printer OS, they prompt you as to whether you have a couple of their partner printers in particular, the Dremel line of printers is one that I remember. The software is free for basic slicing. If you want to use any of their management capabilities, you pay a monthly fee. It's moderately inexpensive to use for up to five printers. Uh, then you pay a, a fee per additional printer. Um, but clearly, they're targeting the high end where you have 10, 20, 30, maybe hundreds of printers because they have a very sophisticated workflow management system where you can load up many prints and schedule them across a range of printers. The printers they support are in a very long list. Now, it does not include the lowest end printers that I've been recommending to some of my viewers. In particular, the very first hobbyist printer I often recommend to people is the Monoprice 
Select Mini. I do not recommend the Delta, the printer here. I find it very difficult to use and hard to use, but the Monoprice Select Mini, I think, is a wonderful printer that you can get for, depending on whether you get an open box or a brand new one, for between one and $200, and it's very easy to use. Not currently supported by this environment. The other thing that makes this just a bit challenging is this environment requires a connection to your printer. Now you can do that through a Raspberry Pi box. You can do that via a USB cable. You can do that for a network connected printer over a network connection. But it does require, it does assume your printers are all connected to some device that then's talking to this environment. I find this product really quite interesting but maybe not for my viewers. It might be a little bit too sophisticated, a little bit too hard to get started, um, and maybe not has just too much for my particular viewers. I will be testing it in more detail. I have not been able to test a print yet because I didn't have the time to direct connect the device to either software running on my PC, on my laptop, on a Raspberry Pi, but I will be testing this further for part two. Okay, now let's look at this table and wrap up what we've learned so far. In terms of open source, Astroprint and Kirimoto are both available for download and use to your own computer. They are available as open source on GitHub. Canvas and 3D Printer OS are proprietary. Astroprint is a hybrid environment. There are paid versions and there are free versions. Kirimoto is completely free. You can run it locally on your own computer or on the web. Canvas and 3D Printer OS are proprietary, but there are three free versions available. Astroprint in some ways is the most flexible with web, desktop, Raspberry Pi, mobile interfaces. Kirimoto is really web-based, browser-based. Canvas is browser-based and you cannot host it yourself. 3D Printer OS is web-based, but you need a connection to a piece of software you either run on a computer on your desktop or on a dedicated box. Astroprint has both basic management capabilities and basic print queues, so you can queue things up to print, and as you take something off your printer, you it, the next item will then print. Kirimoto has no management capabilities other than saving files, some very basic capabilities. Canvas today is very basic, but they're promising in their paid version, there will be sophisticated management capabilities. And 3D Printer OS is a whole print management ecosystem. Astroprint Slicer are the slicers you're used to. So you're gonna get the same quality that you're used to from Slice 3R or from Cura. Kirimoto is their own, it's, I'm listing it as proprietary because one guy wrote it, uh, but it's open source. If you wanted to, theoretically, you could contribute to it and modify the slicer. The level of innovation will depend on the time available of the author to make changes. So I expect Kirimoto will evolve slowly. Canvas is proprietary, backed by a successful company, I think it shows enormous promise as perhaps the ideal solution for my viewer community. Supported by a company making a high-end product, it will be a good quality slicer, free version is available, easy to use with a good UI. And 3D Printer OS is really in a different category. It is a very sophisticated piece of software. I'm very impressed with it. I'm going to learn more about it. And in part two, we'll look at some of those additional capabilities. In terms of overall print quality, I am still testing, but as I mentioned, Astroprint has the potential to be identical to what you do on your desktop. Um, Kirimoto is a adequate slicer, pretty good, but I think it will evolve slowly. Canvas, I think, will be very good. I don't know about 3D Printer OS yet, but it's being used by very high-end um, proprietary printers like Dremel, so I expect it's quite good. In terms of configuration, 
Astroprint was easy to configure, Kirimoto was easy to configure, so was Canvas. 3D Printer OS is a little more complex. If your printer is not listed in their list of supported printers, you do have to send them a request. It appears you can't do a new printer configuration on your own. I might have missed something, that, but that's my first impression. In terms of ease of use, um, Astroprint has enormous potential, but it's not quite there yet. Kirimoto is pretty easy to use, but a little bit limited. Canvas, I think, will be the right alternative for my viewers, but I need to do more testing. 3D Printer OS has both easy modes and more sophisticated modes. Overall, it's just a lot of software. Well, folks, I hope this was an interesting introduction to web-based slicing and preparation of models to print on a 3D printer. There will be a part two after I've done more testing across a range of printers. If this was helpful, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, tell everyone you know about uh, this channel so we can help it grow. And thanks again for watching. Let's continue to learn things together.